Hi everyone, welcome to this week's tutorial. So what we're going to do this week is we're going to tackle some textured cloth. Uh, I ran a quick poll on my community page on YouTube and it was either going to be Orc Skin, Plasma Glow or Textured Cloth. And Plasma Glow and Textured Cloth both came in at 40%. So I made the call and I chose uh, Textured Cloth because there's loads of Plasma Glow tutorials out there currently, but not too many Textured Cloth ones. And I thought this would be something different uh, from Space Marines and some of the other stuff we've done already as well. So what I'm going to do is I've just blue tacked some uh, this Chaos Space Marine torso front here. And we're just going to do a little bit of cloth there just to show the uh, the technique that uh, I'm going to show you guys. And I'm going to go through the cool browns. So if you imagine it's like a, a piece of leather or a piece of cloth or something, you can use this technique with any colors, um, you know, I mean, you could use, I was going to use red, but I thought we'll show the browns because, you know, they're nice and you can get some nice depth and we can maybe put some glazes in at the end and things as well. So yeah, I'm just going to go through on this one really. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, when you're doing any of this technique, so you just need to get a solid base coat down first. So I'm going to use a mid-tone brown. So I'm going to use Steel Legion Drab uh, and I'm going to basically just thin that down a bit. And as we always do in the videos to get a solid base coat, it's keep your paint thin, move your brush fast. Don't let it dry too quickly. Just keep your brush moving. And then once this layers down, let it dry completely and then add another layer over the top. It'll probably take about three. So let that dry completely, another layer, let it dry. Maybe, maybe a third one just to get a solid smooth base coat so what you, that's what you'll achieve there so i'll uh, let that dry give it a couple of coats and we'll come back and we'll carry on okay so we've got a solid base coat now ready for some uh, some shading and some highlighting so we're just talking about doing texture on cloth so uh, when you're doing texture uh, try and keep in mind what type of cloth it is that you're painting so in this case i'll just do it as like a, a rough linen or something like that um some cloths won't have any texture or will have very little so for example like uh, i'm painting this autark here which will probably never get finished <laughs> at this rate but i would imagine his sash is silk you know he's a very rich sort of you know um he, he wouldn't have coarse cloth or anything like that it would be smooth so i'm not going to put any texture on this guy's cloth because i want it to be highly reflective and shiny like silk so just keep in mind what type of uh, what type of cloth it is that you're painting and so some will have more texture some will have less some might have a slightly different texture as well so um, when you're painting textures and things it's nice uh, what it does it breaks up the surface of the miniature because sometimes when you're painting a miniature you'll tend to fall into the trap of just coloring in the miniature which is essentially what you're doing but what you want to do is you want to treat each surface as if it's different so which we'll talk about more, more about that as we paint through. So basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to block in some shading and some highlighting. I'm not going to do any texture yet. What I want to do is I just want to guide where my shading and highlighting is going to go before I do any texture. So I'm just going to thin down a little bit of dryad bark on my palette. Just create that, create a little wash with that. You could use dark brown, ink or whatever, or washes or contrast paint, but I'm just going to basically whack really quickly some of that into the recessed areas because if you start texturing straight away over this you're kind of flying blind a little bit but if you just do some rough and when and i say rough I just quickly wash in some dark and we'll put some rough highlights on as well it's going to help guide where your texture is going to go because when you're doing the texturing you'll you, we're going to do a, a a technique which is known as sort of stippling so um, if you just keep doing that you can kind of do too much or not enough but if you've got this shading and highlighting on here first really roughly you'll know where it goes and how much to do and how deep to take it and so on so this is just going to help us help us with the guiding our highlights and shade with the stippling basically <clears throat> So that's the a little bit of dry bark. We'll let that dry. Whilst it's drying, I'm going to go straight on to getting some highlights on. So a little bit of Steel Legion Drab mixed with Bane Blade Brown on the palette. So about 50-50 mix. That's We're keeping that thin as well. And I'm just roughing in a few highlights. 
sketchy. Don't have to be super neat with it. I just want to inform me as I'm painting later where those highlights are going to go. So this is really fast, really loose. Don't worry about blending anything. You're just going okay. This is going to be lighter than this area. Those recesses are darker. I'm just going to help a little bit as well. So just keep doing that. <clears throat> so as I was saying, like painting different surfaces and different textures really shows um, that you're thinking about miniatures in a different way. You're painting them in a different way. So um, say a space marine's got a cape and uh, his armor is smooth. So that's not got any texture on it. Maybe you've done some battle damage, but other than that, but the cape could be uh, <coughs> could be textured, could have some texture on that, or it could have some weathering on there. And then by doing that, you're not only showing it's a different colour, but it's also made out of a different material. And that's when you take your painting to a slightly different level when you start thinking about, oh, okay, so this area is armour, this is cloth, it will reflect light differently and react differently. So... Um, yeah, thinking about that is quite interesting. That's a fun part of painting miniatures as well. I quite enjoy it, especially when you move to a different area. Like, okay, um, what's this made out of? How will the light work on it? What's the texture of it? Will it have different properties? Things like that. Um, anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep getting on some highlights on here really quickly. <clears throat> so now just pure Bane Blade Brown trouble saying that <clears throat> keeping it thin again so it's okay I'll have some highlights here here down there it's quite fun painting at this speed actually because normally it's a lot slower no like I say we're just plotting in no texture in mind just yet. Just light and shadow. And like I said, this texture technique will work on anything, but it doesn't mean you have to use it on everything. Uh, I also uh, textured armour quite a lot as well. That works quite well. You can imagine some armour is pitted and that whole surface could be textured so it doesn't have to just be on cloth but obviously it works really well on cloth and I'll probably just have one more highlight of uh, Rakar flesh just thin that down and that will just be on the very lightest areas To help us as we go through. And these are highlights and shades will act as a backdrop for the uh, stippling technique as well so when you stipple you won't you'll be leaving gaps as we stipple and those gaps will be filled in by these uh, these plotted highlights and shade we're putting on right now. <clears throat> Hopefully it'll make sense later. Okay, cool. So I'll just quickly finish this and then we'll get on to some stippling next. Okay, so we've got our um, highlights and shade plotted in there. Did it quite quickly, quite rough, but keeping the paint thin so it doesn't you know, get thick or clog up or anything like that. So we've just got some guidance there with it. So uh, we can actually start doing some stippling now. <clears throat> so uh, we're gonna do a mix of Steel Legion Drab and Bane Blade Brown. Never using that colour ever again, <laughs> can't say it. Uh, so, and just mixing that on the palette 50 50, keeping it thin, always thin with this technique. Small amount of paint on the brush there, we don't need a lot. And uh, so, this technique does take some time to do, um, so you just have to be patient with it. So, this is our one, say, our highlight. So, we've got our base coat, shade, and highlight. So, we're actually going to use this as a highlight. So, 
we're just going to start stippling. So stippling with dabbing, basically dab the end of your brush. Let me show you, get close. So don't go too far into the shadow. And once you get the knack of it, it's quite fun um, getting this technique down. I know some people exclusively use this technique on a lot of their miniatures. Hopefully you can see sort of what's going on. So this is a mid-tone. Trying to keep it in focus for you. And then once you notice that the paint's running out, just reload your brush again with that mix. And then start dabbing again. So don't go into the shading areas too much because we're going to use a darker mix for there. So hopefully you can start seeing some of that coming through. <clears throat> and you can go over the lighter areas if you want to, but you don't need to because we're going to be doing lighter stippling there. This is where that those quick highlights that we put on really help. <clears throat> you don't need to worry about where anything's going, you, you already kind of know. So what I'll do is I'll save you the boredom and I'll carry on with this and we'll come back in a second. Okay, so that's that first stippling stage done. That was the mix Steel Legion Drab and Bane Blade Brown. Uh, so now we're just going to carry on doing the same thing. So we're going to go, we'll carry on highlighting for now. We'll do some shading in a bit. And I'm just going to use pure Bane Blade Brown now. See, I'm getting the hang of it now. I can see it. <clears throat> Loading that up a little bit, keeping it thin. And then we're going to leave some of the first stage stippling showing. And we're going to move to the slightly lighter areas start stippling focusing in where it would be lighter so using your guiding highlights there to say okay this is good this is where they should be i'm just going to go over those areas again and you're going to leave a gap between these but don't worry about that because your previous stippling layer and your guide Highlight layers uh, will help you fill in those areas and keep the colour strong. And I keep getting it out of the camera for you. Or well, never learn. There we go. So hopefully you can start seeing that a little bit more now. It's never the same on camera as what it is here, but hopefully you get the idea. It's really the technique that I'm trying to show you guys here. That's important. I think um, this looks great on, uh, let's say you paint some Dark Eldar or Drukhari um, and they've got like skins on them. They look great with this technique as well. Um, Night Goblin robes look great with black textured cloth because you would imagine that would be quite thick and coarse um, to not too smooth. So you can get some texture on there with the greys and stuff. That works quite well. Obviously, Chaos Space Marines are great with that sort of stuff. The new uh, Bone Reapers have got lots of robes and cloth on them as well, and skins. That would be quite good. <clears throat> but like I say, look, some things probably don't need this, <clears throat> depending on what it is. We'll keep going there. So it's quite a fun technique to do once you get into the flow of it. Sometimes you can do textured skin as well, which is quite nice. Like a troll or something like that might have textured skin. Because they're quite big, you could get that detail in there. Keep dabbing your brush on. So 
So I think we've done a couple of highlights now. I don't like to do, uh, whenever I'm painting anything, I don't like to do all the highlights and then all the shading or all the shading then all the highlights. So I like to do a backwards and forwards thing. So you do your base coat and then you shade a little bit, highlight a little bit, shade a little bit, highlight a little bit, and then you'll have a nice true representation of the color you wanted rather it being rather than it being too dark or too light. So I've done a little bit of highlighting now. Um, so now I'm going to do a little bit of shading. So I'm just going to take some dryad bark <clears throat> And do the same thing, we'll thin that down a bit, get some of that on the brush, and then we'll start stippling into the recesses now. So, using that same technique, but with the darker paint, focusing in on the folds, and the creases, and this cloth. Dab it down there. And obviously the, the deeper folds will go darker with those shades. That's dip technique. This is uh, similar to pointillism, which is you just use loads of dots to fill in color. So similar thing. <clears throat> I think I did this technique on a Blood Angel Captain cloak and he had a white cloak. Um, and it took forever, but it was nice in the end. From a arm's length, it doesn't look textured, but then you get up close and you can see the texture on it, and obviously in photographs. So it kind of, um, the technique disappears once you get too far away, but then when people look at it close, you know, they, uh, they value the work you've put in. So that's quite nice. So just focusing in where the shaded areas we plotted in are. So I, I did try this technique a while ago where without doing the plotting in that we did to begin with. And it just didn't work. It didn't work for me. So I know some people will do it differently, but this is the method I found and it speeds the process up as well and makes it a little bit less painful. And you just basically keep going over and over and over until you're happy with that amount of shading. So we'll come back in a second and carry on. Okay, so we're carrying on now. We're going to do a little bit more shading. So I've done a mix, about 50-50, uh, black and dryad bark. And then we're going to really look at the, uh, the recesses now and go into there. So thin down on the brush, size one. That's what I'm using right now. Uh, and we're just going to really focus in on those deepest creases because this is one of our darkest shades. So down here, still dabbing it in. Just to keep going with the texture the feel. We'll go under there. So when you're painting cloth, I see it quite often. Uh, so this cloth here, your ma this crease here is very deep. And this one is still deep, but not as deep as this one. So this one is shallow. And there's some even shallow ones here. And I see sometimes examples where every crease is shaded and highlighted to the same degree. So just keep in mind the contour of the cloth. So you want deeper shading here. This shading here is fine for this area, so we don't need any more. You can get a bit carried away with this. And go, okay, so I'm on the shaded area, I need to shade all the areas. It's like, no, you don't need to, just the areas that you want to, you know, reinforce that are, they're deeper, or like, same with the highlights as well. You don't need to do every area, just the ones that need it. So, that was just me getting, going off on a tangent there. So, yeah. So, I'm just finding the deepest creases now. Take your time with it if you're new to do, doing this sort of stuff. So you can go, okay, so that's quite deep there. So we'll pop some in there. And you'll find that because you're keeping your paint thin, it'll run in there anyway for you, so you don't need to worry about that. There's another tight crease there. So 
soon as the paint dries, you'll see it. And you could paint a whole miniature with this technique. I know Dave Saber, he uses stippling quite a lot. And there's some of the painters that use it occasionally. I like to use it sometimes. Like a Skaven cloak would be good. Go, keep doing it. So hopefully now you can start to see what we've got going on. We're just dabbing the brush on and using those colours. I'm not going to cut back, guys. I'm going to keep going because I prefer doing it this way. Forces me to keep talking. Okay, cool. So that was a mix. <clears throat> I think I might just get a little bit of black and just thin that down on its own. Just in the we've got some really deep folds here. I'm just gonna put that in there just for definition and contrast. So you're going to keep your paint thin so there's no, you know, if we're dabbing you don't want lumps so if your paint's thin it won't, it won't give you that so that's what we're looking for. Okay so we are going to cut away now so I'll come back in a second once that's dry and then we'll go back onto some highlights now. Okay, so we've done some shades now. So like I said, we've done a couple of shades. Now we're going to do some highlights now. A uh, bit of backwards and forwards process. So we're going to go on to Rakar Flesh, which is a cool brown highlight. So we're going through the cool brown palette here and thinning that down as well. And this is quite a light colour. So we are just going to focus this in on where the highlights are. Because we're getting lighter, I'm trying to be more considerate with where we're stippling now. So really just keeping it in. Where the highlights are. See without those highlights it would be quite difficult to know where we're going. Still stippling, still dabbing, reinforcing the texture that we want. And the, obviously, well not obviously, um, the more you press on, the lighter the colour is going to be. So you can do some slightly lighter, some bigger, some smaller. You want that random feel here, you don't want it to feel like a pattern. do a bit down here so you guys can see the hopefully you can see that there <clears throat> so I'll keep going with this layer so this is rack off flesh and I'm just gonna go over the highlight areas here and then we'll come back in a minute because it's quite a large area to do so and I'll show you the result in a okay so that's that highlight layer done that was uh, rack off flesh so just on the very extreme edges now, I'm just going to thin down some Pallid Witch Flesh now. <clears throat> He's going to keep this very thin. It doesn't need very much. Um, I would imagine this type of cloth not to be very reflective, not very shiny, but I'm just going to put a little bit on those edges just to describe those edges, especially where the folds are. So just dabbing it on. Trying to keep it in focus. It's being very light now. So you develop a light touch when you 
using this technique. You can't be very heavy handed with it. So just put on less than what you need and you can always add more. But if you put on more, you can't take away. <clears throat> so just keep that in mind. So you can see what's going on there now. So I'm just finding those sharp creases now. Just dabbing a little bit of that final highlight. So we're still not painting lines, we're just still dabbing, stippling, whatever you want to call it. And if you do enough of them, it will do that highlight for you so you don't need to paint those strong lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this, get this final highlight on, and then we'll show you a little bit more that you can do with texture cloth. Okay, so the last highlight stage is done now. So yeah, we've got the texture on the cloth now. We've got some textured shading, textured highlighting. It's quite heavy on there uh, on the screen, but it's actually a little bit more subtle uh, in real life. But um, yeah, I'll take a photograph at the end as well as I normally do. Uh, so what you can do now is because you've got the texture on there and this cloth's got holes in it, this wonderfully sculpted piece of cloth sculpted by me. <laughs> uh, it's got some holes in it. Um, so we're just going to, you know, accentuate the uh, the tattered nature of the cloth. And um, we're just going to do some rips and uh, things like that with, with the paints. We're going to add a little bit more using paint. So... Uh, if you've seen the battle damage tutorial, it's very similar to that. What we're going to do is just thin down some dark, um, some, some dark brown here, some of the shading, some of the dryad bark, a little bit of black mix. And then if you imagine like this is going to be more tattered and broken towards the bottom of the, uh, the loincloth. So I'm just going to put a few, a few more marks, some, some larger, some different shapes, just around the bottom. Because they're not always going to be the same size. And, and it'll add more depth and texture to this surface as well. So I don't want to go too far up the, uh, the loincloth, but just a few would be nice. And take one of your highlight colours. I think I'll just use some uh, Rakar Flesh. Thin that down. And just underneath where we've painted those darker areas. Just like these actually, these sculpted holes have got highlight at the bottom. We'll do a thing here as well. We'll highlight underneath. And it'll just give that illusion that that's a hole and that there's a, a bit of depth there to the cloth where it's come away. And this this sort of stage adds a nice little something extra to the cloth, which I like to do, especially on sort of tatty cloth like this. Extra rips in it. See there, it's just giving that illusion, even though it's just a flat surface. <clears throat> Tap that on. Yeah. So I'm hoping that's being picked up okay. So I've just done a couple around the bottom there, but you could take it a bit further up if you wanted to. <clears throat> I'm just gonna have a bit of fun with this before we finish. So I think that the colour, the texture's there, but I think the colour's quite flat because we've literally just highlighted and shaded. Whereas we can add a few few nuances into this with some warmer tones. So I'm just going to thin down some scrag brown. Um, just using this because it was pretty close to me. I and mean, you could use a warm brown contrast paint or a warm brown wash or another brown. I'm just using this because it's a very warm brown. I'm going to thin this down very heavily now. And I'm just going to pick a few areas just to go and, and stain basically with this warmer brown. Just to break up 
the flatness of the colour that we've got going on. And it, what I'll do is I'll just give it a little bit more something else. I'm going to focus it around the bottom. Maybe it's been hitting the ground or something. And this is uh, something really nice to do for characters. And you, know, you see there, it's just, it's just tinted that area and it's just changed it quite a lot. It's a really nice thing to do. You can always change <clears throat> the tone and the colour of the things you've painted at the end a little bit just with these glazes and let it dry and you can keep going over and add more if you're like oh it's not strong enough I'll do a bit more I want it a little bit stronger and it just just adds a little something extra and I've got some uh, Balor brown here as well which is a very yellow brown and we can do the same thing Getting a bit carried away here, but I'm having fun. So a very yellow brown, and I'm just going to do the same thing, just like a few areas. Not a lot. Just here and there. This is adding a bit of interest to that area there. Usually these last stages, that's the, the part when you can start you know, bringing those areas to life a little bit more. I'm having fun. With miniature painting, I always think nothing ever looks great until it's finished. So don't be disheartened halfway through if you think it's not going well. Just keep going, keep going, you'll be fine. Yeah. And then we spoke about in other tutorials. If you use lots of layers of different colored paints, which we've done here, so each paint has a different finish quality. So some will be more shiny, some will be more matte. Um, what you want to do is you want this surface to appear as one surface, as if it's made out of one material. Uh, and you can use matte varnish or whatever you like. I'm going to use a bit of Lamian medium. Um, I'm not going to thin it down, it's straight out of the pot. And I'm just going to really quickly paint it over the whole surface. Just give it one layer of Lamian medium. And it's going to pull all of those paints together and give it the appearance that it's been painted with one finish rather than many different coloured finishes. And that's going to really help. Once it's dry, we'll come back. So there we go now. I've just given it a quick blast with the trusty heavy metal air dryer. And uh, that's all dry now and it's got the one finish all over it. Like I say, I think it's coming across with a lot of contrast in the image you're seeing right now. So I'm going to take a photograph as well so you can see that. Well, basically, you can see the texture we've got in there, the shading and the highlighting, that's all textured. Uh, it was relatively quick as well. Um, you can see you can add a little more, some more scratches and scratches and nicks and holes as you want to. But you change your colour, do what you want. Um, change the depth and the level of texture. You can be heavier handed with it if you want to. Or a little bit more subtle you don't have to do as much it's really up to you but i really just wanted to show the technique and then you can apply it across so if you try this technique uh and you want to show me uh just tag me on uh, instagram darren lay them on instagram and uh, i'd be interested to see how you get on with it if you've not done it before as well so that'd be quite cool to see some results from people so there you go so hopefully you found this useful and uh, you give it a go and i'll see you in the next tutorial everyone thank you bye Okay everyone, so like I said, I wanted to take a photograph for you so you could see. I didn't think it was coming across very well on video, all of the textures that we were adding, we were using the stippling. So there you can see all of the uh, little scratches that we added and all of the, uh, the highlighting and the shading that we added originally that we stippled over and that helped us quite a lot. And you can see the depth there and the contrast and the highlight and the shading. So uh, yeah, so it's coming across a little bit better there. So give it a go and let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks guys, bye.